All right, everyone. Welcome once again. It is Friday. And what does that mean? It means it's time for manufacturing e-commerce success. Today, we're going to be talking about prospecting on purpose, Kurt Anderson. I'm your host, Damon, co-host Damon Pastalka. That pretty guy right over there, I can just about touch him. Just about touch him. It's Kurt Anderson. And we're and then we got Nicole Donnelly down here. And we're going to be talking with, mm -hmm. do this right. I can't do it. <laughs> Uh -oh. Worry about prospecting. Kurt, take it away. Hey, Damon. Man, dude, what a great intro that was. So happy I was Friday, just man. Uh, oh, how how could you not be excited? I know it's morning where you're at. It's lunchtime where I'm at. And the what a, an amazing, incredible, wonderful day to dig into prospecting sales. And just we brought in a powerhouse. Yep. So I just, I'm just so excited. So, hey, Nicole. We have a little LA, little Utah connection going on here. So all sorts of, we've got Nicole Donnelly here and hey, hey. we've got, say it isn't so, Sarah Murray is in the house. So Sarah, <laughs> happy Friday. How are you? I'm doing so awesome. I'm so happy to talk to you all today. Thanks for having me on. Oh, well, we are thrilled, and so we're coming. To, we're we're coming at you live. So we've got Sarah from LA, morning where she's at, and so let's just get things fired up. If you're with us, drop us a note in the chat box. Let us know where you're coming from. Bring your questions, man. We have a. If you yeah. are struggling with your sales, prospecting, we have the authority. We have the guru just for you. Let, let's go here, Sarah. Is you were a little girl growing up? As you were a little girl growing up, who was your hero? Who was your hero as a little girl growing up? Yeah, I'm going to say both my mom and my dad together because we were raised in, they're from both from Los Angeles. They moved us to Park City, Utah, you know, 37 years ago. So, so before you, Park City was what it is now. Yeah. We were just alone in the mountains as a family and they worked so hard for our family I just really saw their work ethic. I saw their relationship to work and how they would talk about their coworkers, how they would go on business trips, but make it work. You know, it was just, um, I think, a really nice environment for me to see that relationship with work, but also be really supported in being my authentic self. They really just kind of let me like fly my freak flag and supported me in whatever thing I want to do. And, and to this day, they support me in my business in many ways. So I have to say mom and dad because um, I've been so blessed to have such nice ones. Oh, hey, that's a great answer. We love that answer. Mom and dad's names, by the way. Mary and Tim. Mary and Tim. All right. Well, hey, big shout out to Mary and Tim. Proud of like their little girl on the show and just this wonderful, illustrious career that you've been building for yourself. So let's go here. We were just talking about the Utes. University of Utah, you so and then you find your way into, I believe, like electrical engineering or electrical uh, contract manufacturer, if I'm not mistaken. Do I have that correct? Oh, yeah, it's been a journey. So um, I moved as soon as I graduated college. I had a really big tax return that year. It was like three <laughs> grand. So that was really Woo! big when you're like 22. Yeah, yeah. Um, 23, I think so. Hey, hey, are you trying to make us jealous or what? <laughs> no, you know, we, we had us be. I know, man. I, I had a tax bill last year. <laughs> so I, um, yeah, I, did, I mean, I took my three grand. My Both of my grandparents at the time had surgeries and they both needed support. So my grandpa had eye surgery. My grandma had back surgery and neither of them could move for like four months. So my parents rented the house and extorted them to help them. And I kind of thought, well, this is like a free way to try Los Angeles. So moved to LA, I got the car and the job and the apartment. And then I just have been here for the past 15 years. So I always joke, my driver's license has expired twice and I've served jury duty twice. So I'm officially an Angelino. Hey, and I will say I have seen celebrities in jury duty. So when people ask, like they have to go, if anyone well, was curious about that one. Well, how cool is that? Yeah. So, I, yeah. Yeah. So I've been in LA for the past 15 years, always in like the commercial construction uh, industry. So architecture and design had a lot of um, developers as my clients, architects as my clients, interior designers, electrical engineers, contractors. It's a it's a very complex sales process to build a commercial mm -hmm. building. It takes many many years. It requires a lot of patience, and it requires uh, making sure that you have relationships with all of the players that have a vote in the in the purchase of your product. So I've uh, served as national roles for three different global companies. And then I just felt this calling and this itch that I, I had to scratch because I feel 
like a lot of my success in sales has always been around the very beginning, like prospecting and the ability to build relationships quickly. And I've noticed it's an area where people struggle. People are afraid to prospect. They don't, you know, when you're, when you're in a sales role, a lot of times you're going into it with what am I going to get out of it instead of how can I add value to my clients? And so I just have kind of figured out there's, in my opinion, just this missing hole in the market. And that's what I'm building my, my brand around and my messaging and my workshops and my content around how to really start the process when it comes to prospecting, having the right confidence to approach someone and convince them to buy your product. It's not an easy thing. And um, so I want to be able to help people and, and serve and make them more comfortable in their prospecting efforts. Well, that's awesome. So let's let's go here for a minute. So Nicole, so Sarah comes to us from our dear friend Tony. So Tony was a wonderful. Uh, he's a dear friend, part of a mastermind, and I know you're in a mastermind with Tony as well, Sarah. So big shout out to, uh, to Tony for making this connection. Let's when you and I connected, you shared some really powerful stories, and if my my recollection serves. You, you know, you're kind of in a man's world, you know, electrical, uh, you know, contract manufacturing in the contra uh, contracting world, if you will. And you really found like your superpowers of, you know, how your personality just really shine. Just walk us through like what, it, you know, of all the different industries that you could have picked. Mm -hmm. Why did you find that, you know, hey, I'm going to I'm what attracted you going in this direction? And what were some things that you navigated that you felt like that where you really shine bright? I think one of the things when you look back at like the like the pivot points in your career of what, what may really makes you make a turn. I had one mentor, his name was Jamie Heil. Um, he and I still talk, but, and that's been really fun for me starting the business is now I can still call him and say, Hey, I'm stuck here. And we've worked together for a long time. So I learned a lot of kind of the, the programming and what I've built from him. So he was a really big pivot point for me, but what I have really found is that, in my opinion, the relationship is the most valuable piece that you can hold. And if you, I think it's an area that people don't talk about that often, because if you don't have the relationship at the beginning of the sales cycle, it really doesn't become a problem until the end of the sales cycle, where all of a sudden you're competing on price or you're trying to scramble because you had only one contact that was on board, but the other six didn't know about you because you didn't build those relationships, folks, to get to all the right people. Um, another thing when it comes to relationships is a lot of times, especially in like manufacturing industries, we get in technical fields we talk about our products widget features, right? Like, okay, this mm -hmm. can do X, Y, Z. Here's all the product features. When we think about our competitors, we'll do all this competitive analysis on how our product's better than the competitor. But sometimes that stuff doesn't really matter if you don't have the relationship. Because in a lot of ways, the competitor, the true competitor isn't the competing product. It's the relationship that the competitor salesperson has with your client. That's, I think, the biggest disconnect. And I feel one thing I learned from Jamie that I really like, I, I feel have mastered is the ability to ask questions and understand my client's business model and then present my product or service as a solution that will impact their business model. And what I've started to learn in my consulting in my consulting firm is I will be supporting um, I will be supporting a client that has a product. And I can go into the sales pitch. I don't know anything about Wi-Fi verification. I don't know anything about some of the widget features. But if I can ask questions about the client's business model, then we can start to untap the holes and easily plug in the product. So if you have the relationship and if you have some of these skills on, on speaking business model instead of product features, those two pieces to combined makes it really impenetrable from the competitor standpoint. Okay. Man, <laughs> right there. I'm like, a... <laughs> because it, it's so great because you said one thing in this. It says your your true competitor is the relationship that your competitor has with your potential customer, and that's that's so key uh, because it it's just you know it's the same thing. And if you're selling something and your main competitor is in action, right? If you're uh -huh. doing something that they can't do it, it's like you, you really need to know what they're up against and and when you're looking at something like you're talking about technical products architectural stuff engineering work a lot of people can do it yes there's going to be differences here or there but is that like 
the difference between, you know, a, whatever, something that's really wide, or are we in a competitive market where everybody can do about the same? Cause then it's, yeah. it's, you look at manufacturing, like if you're at a CNC machining place, it's critical to have that relationship because they're going to make it just like you down the street. Right. Mm -hmm. And I, I think one thing to consider too, especially in these types of industries where we don't always have a seat at the table with the decision maker, we may be talking to an engineer who has to turn around and sell it to his client. And so you may be in a sales meeting where you think it's going great because they're asking you questions and you're able to answer all the features but you just want a bunch of product facts. Maybe that engineer can understand it, but he has to turn around or she has to turn around and be the salesperson on your behalf. So the way that you're able to build relationships, A, might get you a seat at the table with the actual decision maker. That's always my number one goal. If I can do it, like who's making the decision, build the relationship with the person you have to get to the core decision maker. But at the same time, if you don't have that opportunity, you need to have certain skills to be able to give them ammo essentially to turn around and sell on your behalf. I, I would call that like train the trainer. So when you're mm -hmm. talking about all these product facts, that's not going to stick in their brain to turn around and sell it. But if you can speak business model, it's going to be a lot easier to equip that person with some storytelling that they can go sell to the client and how it impacts their business. So there's a lot of layered skills we're chatting about mm -hmm. here, but, but once you have the relationship, the rest of it becomes a lot more seamless. Yeah. I, you've been in sales for a long time and I'm super curious to hear how you see the sales process, especially for the complex B2B mm -hmm. sales, you know, world that we're in. How has that shifted over time in terms of the buying process, the sales process? What have, what have you seen? Like, are you seeing sales cycles getting longer, more committees? Like as time has gone on, what shifted and and especially like, you know, I own a content marketing agency. So I'm just super curious to hear your thoughts on, you know, how marketing has come to play and what you're, what you feel like the relationship should be there with sales. Yeah, I, I just asked it. you like five questions. No, no, I got it. So <laughs> let's we'll talk about the first one. It's like, oh, it was a little dirty, but, but I'm, I was with you and I, I definitely understand what you're saying. I think the yeah. biggest shift that I've seen is that there are a lot more decision makers that all have to be voting yes to your product. It's not always just a buyer seller. Mm -hmm. So yep. I think just more, more players in the mix. I think one gap that people miss, and I think this is an area for sales and marketing to really work together, um, is your messaging to an engineer may be completely different than to the developer and completely different to the person who's going to use the space. Mm -hmm. So I would encourage you, if you have something where there are that many decision makers, how can you look at you know, maybe you just do a brain dump of all your product features and program features and say what fits with which stakeholder. Mm -hmm. I'm saying the word player, but stakeholder is probably a better term to use. Mm -hmm. and, and then you have to, I mean, this is where you really have to practice. Like if you are yeah. have a meeting with an engineer, you can't go into all of the fluffy marketing messages that you might do for an end user. But if you have a meeting with the end user and you go in chatting all your engineer talk, it's just going to go right over their head and the person that can speak business model and speak their language and speak to the right, the right um, messaging is going to win the business. So it really has to be able to pivot to who you're talking to. And, and in my opinion, the easiest way to do that is to ask questions at the beginning of your meeting. I mean, I think that's one of the most crucial things is, Hey, Mr. So-and-so, Hey, Miss So-and-so, Miss Client, before we get started, I'd love to understand your business needs so I can cater my comments to your needs. Like it can be something as that simple of a script and just yeah. let them talk because what happens is people leave a lot of money on the table because they're not asking any questions or they go into the meeting and they assume they know what they're talking about. And if you can just pause and ask that question, it's going to change the whole course of your meeting and the sales process. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Oh. Couple, couple things that Damon, you made of, all right, I'm going to tie three points together, wrap it up in a bow and then hand it off to you, Sarah. So Damon, you, you, she talked about the competitor, you know, the relationship with your competitor. You made a great point about inaction. Nicole, you and I, I think we we're just talking this morning or maybe it was yesterday afternoon about sometimes a, you know, your biggest competitor is the customer doing nothing. Right. Yeah. 
So yep. just think about that. The relationship of doing nothing is better <laughs> than you. And I guess yeah. I mean, I oh, yeah. Personal. I'm not yeah. Doing it personal, right? Yeah. So yeah. I'm going to hit you with a couple of questions, Sarah. Like, let's talk about like the in like you know Nicole has a content marketing firm, mm -hmm. so the company that needs to make the digital transformation, but they're just unknown, don't know how, intimidated, mm -hmm. overwhelmed. So I either do nothing or maybe I hire a content marketing firm. How, what advice suggestions do you have there to bridge that gap? And then secondly, I want to dig into your time. You said, boy, I learned early in my career how to master the art of asking, asking questions. I'd love to like really run into that. But so first the competitor of doing the competition of doing nothing, how do you tackle conquer that one? I think one of the things that and I'm going to tie it back to business model too. If you have like a content marketing firm, Nicole is the example, and someone's indecisive on whether they need you or not, you really have to show them how a you're solving a problem that they have, whether they know they have the problem or not. And I would say that's what I'm really learning in the consulting world is I first have to show people they have a problem and then get them to hire me to help them solve it. And that's just this mm -hmm. extra step that a lot of these industries have. So I think one of the biggest ways to do it is to start to really understand their business model and where their gaps are and how you are the person or the company to solve those gaps. But that takes time. I think it takes a lot of trial and error. Um, I think one of the things that I view as a gift, and we talk about this a lot when I do trainings, is the ability to handle objections. You know, when you're pitching, you may get objections that you're not ready for or that you've never had. Look at those as a gift because that's going to give you more tools to develop your marketing and your messaging about how you approach people. So I would say pay attention to the objectives that you're getting. I would write them down, like have yeah. a running right. list. That's a big one. Um, and then I would also see what type of positive feedback are you getting? Mm -hmm. Because when you start asking questions about business model, what what I have found is that you're going to uncover areas where you can solve them. And that might completely pivot mm -hmm. your selling message. Mm -hmm. And that's I, one of my one of my first clients in my consulting firm. They had a product that they had their whole pitch and all their budgets and what they wanted to go out and sell. And it just wasn't solving a problem that people had. It was a it was something that helped support your Wi-Fi um, speed, reliability, et cetera. And so when they hired me, I started asking the potential prospects, you know, what do you use for your door locks? What do you use for this? Like, what other Wi-Fi enabled devices do you have on your properties? And they gave me a whole list. And I said, okay, well, when the door locks fail, how do you know? that the Wi-Fi is out. How do you know the door locks aren't working? It's like, oh, we don't have a, we don't have a solution for that. Oh, well, this product will alert you that your door locks aren't responsive. And then you can proactively address that problem. So then we changed the whole selling message to be around how we can support other Wi-Fi enabled devices instead of just check how your Wi-Fi is doing in these short-term rentals, right? So it's, if you start to ask questions and try stuff, you're going to start to see what lights people up. And that's where you really have to like double down and, and drive into that. And that's where those conversations are so, so important too, because um, running businesses that were, like I said, CNC machining and metal fabrication. I mean, we, there were people down the street that could do what we did, but when you sat and talked to your customers and go, you know, what are your problems? What, yes. what keeps you from making product? What are the kind of things, what we would find is that, it's stuff around the product and outside the product itself that sometimes gives you the advantage that no one else was even thinking about, which, and then when you, when you solve that problem for them and Oh, by the way, they're buying product from you to do it. It's like, it's a no brainer for them. Right. Yeah. I think you know, another, way that, another way you could look at that too, or, or to add on to that would be product features versus program features because I yeah. think oh, exactly. you have there the you ability go. to like build programs like warranty, single point of contact, um, flat rate shipping. Like how can you add on program mm -hmm. benefits that's catered to the business needs of your customer? And then instead of doing competitive product by product, it's your relationship and your program features that are going to really differentiate you or help set you apart. And it becomes more, in my opinion, more fun to talk about because you're having business exchanges where you're a collaborative consultative partner to them as opposed to just like a buyer seller. Mm -hmm. yeah. 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 
And you're, you know, you're always going to be ahead of your competitor, the closer you are to the customer. So exactly. your yeah. point, like if, if you prioritize those conversations and really like my father always used to say all the time, you have to get to the pain. You need to get to the pain. Yeah. You need to yeah. know what the pain is. If you don't know what yeah. the pain is, you haven't asked enough questions. Yeah. So, so like if you can get to that pain and you really can really like, like, uh, empathize with it. Yeah. Yeah. And then I think they will see you as like, oh my gosh, this, that they see me and you're always going to be one step ahead of your competitor. Yep. It's like, you why care. wouldn't I work with Nicole? Right. right. But the relationship she knows my pain. Exactly. Who wouldn't work with Nicole? Yeah. And hey, by the way, Damon, we've got we, some comments. We've got some comments. So yeah. I'll flush our flipping them you up here. Sh- you, know you grab I, comments. I, Welcome, everybody. Thank you for yeah. joining us. Man, got Good people cars. from all over here. Yeah, we and got. Yeah, wow. Damon, as you pull up a few, I, you know what, Sarah, if you don't, we'll I did a little, I did a little stalking. I mean, uh, due Shireen. diligence. I didn't say stalking, Nicole. I, <laughs> it's friendly stalking. Come I on. did a little due diligence on our friend Sarah. Jason. So I have a few comments that I want to pull up here. Jason's here today. Thank you for Mike joining Starcher. us. Mike Starcher. Hey, Mike. Mike, thank you for your comment, Mike. I love it. Diane hey, Dan Byers in the house. Diane, happy in. Friday. Hey. Uh, Shireen is here. Shireen had a good comment. Yeah. If you pulled that one. Relationships are yeah. king. So, guys, yeah. thank you. Drop your notes. Drop your questions. Let us know where you're coming from. You absolutely want to connect with Sarah. You will thank mm-hmm. us later. And so, hey, Sarah, plug your ears. We're going to talk about you for a minute. So, okay. Damon, Nicole, I got. So, these are what some of Sarah's friends and some of her collaborators, coworkers, customers have said about Sarah. Let's Sarah, hear all right, Damon, are you sitting down for this one? Are you ready? I'm ready. I'm ready. Sarah is a marketer's dream sales collaborator. Another person says, oh, "Great that. vision." <laughs> Isn't that what? That's a great one, Nicole. Right? Mm-hmm. Uh, you know what? Let's say it again. It feels so good saying that. I'm going to repeat it. Sarah is a marketer's dream sales collaborator. She, another person says, great vision for new businesses. Mm. So folks, if you're a new business and you are maybe you're a little bit on the introverted side, you need a little sales boost, you want to contact Sarah. How about not only did she add value to our customers, but her outgoing attitude was a great asset for our cor- nice. corporate culture. Sarah engages with her clients in such memorable and positive ways. Her passion for what she does shines through her outgoing endeavors. She tends to make projects feel like they're easy and effortless. We can't wait to work with her again. Here's my favorite. Here's the last one. She's an ideal combination of strategic thinker, creative collaborator, and hands-on doer. Her positive attitude and ability to motivate motivate makes her a joy to work with. Sarah, curious minds want to know, how, are we giving all credit to mom and dad? Like, how? <laughs> what, what, where's this coming from? Where, no, why you're, are you such an inspiration? You have to- you have to, I mean, your relationships with your clients aren't the only thing. You have to have nice relationships with your peers and your colleagues and who you collaborate mm-hmm. with. And I think the biggest way that you can really do that is I, I call it A B A V A B A V. Always be adding value. I think any type of exchange you go <laughs> any type any type of exchange you go into, it's like how am I adding value to this person? And it could be something so little, like my grandpa had a avocado tree in Los Angeles, and I would show up to meetings with avocados it was just like i'd go to our corporate headquarters and just drop avocados on people's desks it was such a little thing it didn't cost me any money but you know three years in the future i might need to call that person and i'm not giving them an avocado saying one day i'm going to call you for a favor or need your help to solve a client's problem but i would i've been able to be very efficient because of the relationships that I've built, but it's obviously a two way street, but I think it, that's such a big takeaway is how can you always be adding value to the other person, especially in prospecting, especially in building relationships. If you're always adding value, I call them emotional bank account deposits, right? You're always mm-hmm. putting little bank accounts. When it comes time to withdraw that withdraw from the bank, you have so many deposits. It's, it's a no brainer to withdraw from the bank. Whereas I think a lot of people go into sales and they're trying to get things from their clients and they have, they're drawing from an empty bank account. So I've probably put deficits in their bank account because they haven't added value. So as long as you kind of approach every type of exchange, how can I add value to the other person, whether it's their business or personal life, that's going to get you so far in your prospecting and sales efforts. Yeah, I love it. There's some impact so, right this there. Is actually, I'll mail you some, Mel. <laughs> so her, her, like, 
the king of acronyms and he's i'm this is the first acronym that i has been coined by not kurt it's amazing <laughs> well, there you go we have another great acronym that we're going to yeah. dig into next and before and so and it's a it's ace we're going to dig into ace in a minute if i have that correct but before we go there sarah you have a really powerful uh i believe didn't you don't you have a thank you note that generated a significant amount of sales did, did you oh. share i'm the queen of thank you notes from my so, grandma so we'll give her that credit because if you didn't write her a thank you card you would never get a gift from her again like all of her all friends right. mail them like money for their graduation and she would tell all the neighborhood you know so-and-so's son didn't write me a thank you so i <laughs> I have been trained <laughs> and she practiced what she preached. You know? she would me, I would get a lot of thank you cards from her. I would get a card saying, thank you for coming out and replacing our refrigerator hey, filter. Hey, like, Damon, make sure you send a thank you card to Sarah. Yeah, yeah. Go, yeah. You, don't oh, forget yeah. because we're going to send you guys one. <laughs> we're on the, you know what list. So yeah. hey, Sarah, go. but I believe you shared with me that you had a one particular thank you card that generated something significant. Did, did oh, big right? time. Yeah. So, I mean, th and this is kind of where you really have to, pull in your authentic self, like what works for you. Thank you cards worked yeah. for me because it was ingrained in my, you know, as soon as we could write, thank you cards. <laughs> like I have a whole like bin of just thank you cards. So I keep them in my car. It doesn't work for everyone. So this is just a suggestion, but I keep them in my car and I've always been in an outside sales role. And there's one uh, architecture firm. It's the largest in the world and the largest office in the world is in Los Angeles. So as you can imagine, Every manufacturer in the world is trying to get into this office. And there was one woman who you just, you had to be on the list to, to get into the firm. Yep. And the first time I met her, she suggested a book. We were just chit chatting about books and she suggested a book and I like to read. So I read the book. I liked it. I'm about to go into a meeting at that office. I didn't have a meeting with her. I was just going to be in the office and I went through the Kindle app on my phone. I had thank you cards in my car. And I just jotted down like five books that were kind of similar to the book she suggested. And I'm walking by her desk. I said, hey, I read the book was called The Beach. I forget who the author was. It's kind of a romance novel, not the one that they made the Leonardo DiCaprio movie out of. But the book was called The Beach. I dropped by. I said, hey, I love The Beach. I just went through my Kindle app. And um, here's a couple books that I like. She opens it. She goes, oh my gosh, I have book club tonight and we are supposed to bring recommendations and I had nothing prepared. You just saved me. And I always oh. joke that. It took me 30 seconds. It cost me no money. That was probably like eight, nine years ago. That one gesture has made millions of dollars for the two companies that I've worked for. Um, Amazing. And it's just not that hard. You know, I have another book example where I was cold calling architecture firms to try to get on a, to try to get on their calendars. This could be a year out. I mean, they have everyone, oh, there's yeah. only so many days, work days in a week. And so I go into the firm. This is where listening and asking questions is a great, easy example. I meet the receptionist. I said, Hey, I'm so-and-so Sarah from da da da. Uh, she says, okay, well, we'll put you on the calendar. We're about 13 months out. <laughs> Okay, great. Well, I'll see you in a year and a month, you know, I'll see you next year. Um, and as I'm leaving, I said, well, I'll send you, I'll send you my, um, my spiel, you know, my, my presentation details. She says, okay, well, I'm going to be out of the office next week. So maybe a minute, you know, might be a week before I get back to you. I said, oh, are you going anywhere fun? And she says, yeah, I'm going on vacation to Hawaii for the first time. I said, oh, have a great trip. I'll talk to you in a year. So I get home. I email her the, the presentation details. I email her a second email. And there's just two books for Amazon links of historical nonfiction books that took place in Hawaii. So I just finished these. I liked them. What did you know? I get a response from her that evening. And I was on the calendar two months. <laughs> 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 it's like, it just isn't that hard. And so when we talk about like, I, I will give you another acronym. I call it bridging the gap, G-A-P. What we do is we put all of our customers up on this pedestal. We put our bosses, other mm -hmm. colleagues, we put people we're intimidated by up on this pedestal. Mm -hmm. And the gap we're trying to bridge is this gap. So I, I call it G stands for genuine interest. And this is where, you know, using people's names, having icebreakers ready to make you more confident to, to start to open a door to a conversation, mm -hmm. finding ways to be memorable to the other person. That's kind of the G. We can get into these if we have time. Um, the A stands for authentic relationship building. So some of these emotional bank account deposits I've been sharing, this is where you really want to start to build that 
uh, relationship equity. So you can withdraw once you get to the P, which stands for prized clients. Once you're up on that pedestal with them, it's a lot easier to start to ask for the meeting, ask for the order, ask for an introduction, ask questions that maybe would be uncomfortable to ask right out the gate. But because you built that foundation up to the pedestal, it's a lot easier to ask those questions. It almost becomes seamless. Like, why wouldn't I work with Nicole? She did all of these things for me. She understands my pain point, et cetera, et cetera. Yeah. All right. Tons to unpack right there. And like, yeah. and the biggest thing, what I love what you talked about, like how simple is it to send a book recommendation as opposed yes. to, uh, I watched a video of yours, Sarah, and, and you're talking about, uh, you were somewhere and somebody was trying to sell something to you and you go into this hysterical bit. I'm like, dude, I can't buy an $11,000 tub right now. I'm running an apartment or I don't know. Do you know, you know what I'm talking about? And so you're like, this guy isn't listening to me. He's throwing up on me. Right. Product and, vomit. Product yeah, vomit. Yeah, product product vomit. vomit. And, and like and she's thought you guys, you have to go to Sarah's LinkedIn profile, check out in her featured section. She has a video of herself. It is absolutely hysterical. It is brilliant and it is spot on. So I love what you're describing on like, you know, and it's, you know, out of just genuine enthusiasm, we throw mm -hmm. up on ourselves. We all do it or have done it at some point in time, but you took a step back and you treated them as a person, as a friend. And you're like, Hey, here's a great book. But, you know, you're building re relationships off of a book rec recommendation. Let's dig into ACE. Mm -hmm. I'm going to, can I, can I steal your thunder? I'm going to steal hey, it. Can sure. I steal? Action, communication, execution. You got it. Action. Communication, execution for our friends taking home. And no, hey, Whitney's here today. Whitney, Diane, hey, Damon, we got some notes here, right? Yep. We got Whitney Houston in the house. Diane dropped a, hey, are you my long lost cousin? My grandma taught me to do that too. So I love, yeah. thank you, Diane. Appreciate that. We Shereen, thank our grandmas. Shereen says, I love that, Sarah. Big takeaway is the authenticity at every touch point, dropping off avocado. So again, like, man, you're, hey, you're changing lives here today, yeah. Sarah. But let's talk about ACE. Can you enlighten sure. us? Let's let's take a deep dive there. Yeah. I mean, I, I didn't realize I was an acronym person until I started the business and it's happening. So I always talk about prospecting on purpose is like approaching clients with intention. So we talked about genuine interest, authentic relationship. Once you get the meeting, so I call it pop, pop prospecting on purpose. Then we pivot to ace your sales. So a very simple framework and it, it goes beyond just sales, but very simple framework is action. So Damon gave that example at the top of the interview on the cost of inaction versus action. Sometimes action is just, you're not going to get anywhere. You know, our clients are going to come knock on our doors. We have to go out and get them. It's like the dating analogy, right? <laughs> So action is a big one. Um, then communication. So once you get the meeting, how are you driving that communication through the process? And that's what we were chatting about, understanding business model, uh, using effective storytelling, right? We're not we're not product vomiting on people. We're asking questions. We're telling, we're helping them through it with storytelling and demonstrating our expertise. We're using sales assets to help communicate our message. Nicole, to our earlier point, we're using the right sales asset with the right stakeholder type. We're not mixing and matching if it's mm -hmm. the wrong audience fit. So that's kind of the communication bucket. How effectively are communicating your value both as, as their partner, but also your product's value and program value. And then the E stands for execution. So how are we overcoming objections? How are we proactively um, addressing objections and showing them that we're an expert at what we're selling? How are we staying in the driver's seat? Because a lot of times clients will take us off course and we have to have our destination in mind. That's where a lot of this like on purpose comes from. Like, where are we going? And then uh, obviously executing is, is closing deals and generating repeat business. So that's kind of the, the modular framework that, that we go through in my workshops is action, communication, execution. And then we go into those skill sets in more detail with different uh, you know, deliverables and sales crutches and whatnot. That's awesome. Okay. That's awesome. Let's, all right. So let's recap a couple of things. Little little note to self. And man, Sarah, where were you like for me like 15 years ago? <laughs> no product vomit. I vividly recall a sales situation. I was just like full throttle. And the guy's like, uh, no, I can't do that. Oh, well, hey, what about this? No, I can't do that. Well, hey, what about this? And like, dude, you're not listening to me. Like, I was like, oh, what a degenerate I am. So I absolutely love these acronyms. So pop, ace, 
avoid the product vomit and just really that dedicated communication. Let's let's take a little deeper dive. You said, hey, if we have time to go deeper, let's go a little bit deeper on some of the communication strategies that you advise. Say there's somebody out there like, man, I'm new to the sales world or maybe they've been at it for a long time and like, boy, just the world has changed. I haven't changed with it. What are some tips and strategies that you walk people through at your workshops? Sure. I think I think one of the biggest takeaways that I would like to leave this audience with is obviously building the relationship. So pausing and taking the time to ask just just the chit chatty stuff. Right. So I'll Kurt, you'll like this. I break my icebreakers into I think when people hear icebreakers, they think like team building games, which I love. But that's not what we're talking about here. So I I break them into mild medium and spicy icebreaker. Yeah. Mm. Mm. Just, just a heads up. Spicy just means kind of quirky. Yeah, yeah. PG, you know. Uh, but, so a mild icebreaker would be something really, really easy. Doesn't necessarily turn into a huge conversation, but it could be something to just break the ice. So Damon, I understand you're from Seattle. Are you, are, were you born there? Did you grow up in Seattle? That no. would be an example. I'm supposed to answer. Oh my God. <laughs> where are you from originally? I'm originally from the Midwest. Okay. So <laughs> then, then that's so, okay. We have, yeah, yeah, we're getting there. We're getting right? there. Yeah. I'm, I'm yeah. slow. Yeah. No, so. yeah. I've expressed genuine interest, but now I have yeah. a couple different paths. I could take this combo down. Yeah. I Sarah, go, go, go spicy, go spicy. You on want to go spicy right away? <laughs> <laughs> David loves David. spicy. Okay, are, are you sure? Because I'll give you. Well, I, we'll, we'll, I, we'll, I, we'll, I do like ghost pepper sauce, so I guess we'll, yeah. we'll graduate to it. So, all right, let, uh, let, so let's let's do a little punish. icebreaker game. So okay, so I'm gonna give Kurt his next one. This I'm gonna give yeah. you. I'm gonna give Kurt two. One's gonna be mild, or excuse me, medium. So mild is just like quick answers, yeah. right? Medium might be a little bit more personal information, like oh. how many kids do you have, Kurt? How did you meet your wife? Mm -hmm. That's a, that's a, that would be a medium icebreaker. Go ahead. And then I'll give you a spicy one. Cause these are All right. fun. I All met right. my, I met my wife in high school. How's that? No way. I met my wife in high school and then we didn't, we, we, uh, we reconnected, we rekindled after college. How's that story? Oh my gosh. That's awesome. So you didn't date through college. We did not. We didn't see each other for years, and and we kind of uh, went different directions, and and then all of a sudden now I'm I just had my 25th wedding anniversary. Oh poor poor Gosh. poor woman. So <laughs> you can you, I will congratulations on your 25 Thank you. years, Thank and you. like and I normally would continue to ask questions. Right, 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 right. right. Love <laughs> just it. For okay. purposes of demo. Um. Okay. So another one. I'm gonna I'm gonna throw Nicole one, and then I'll do a round robin. Nicole, this is a spicy one. Who was your childhood celebrity crush? Ooh, like circa before age 10 or like Ooh, high that's school? That's a good qualifier. Uh, give us both. Okay, Three. before age 10, it was totally Michael J. Fox, Back to the Future. I was just Michael like- Michael J. Oh. Fox, love it. Yeah, heebie-jeebies. When I was in high school, heebie-jeebies? Where did that come from? When I was in high school, it was Ben Affleck. And I had massive crush mm. on him right at the time when the internet came out, okay? And this was back in the days when it was like, you could, I would print out black and white pictures and I thought it was so cool. I'd find these pictures of Ben Affleck on the web and I'd print them out in black and white from my printer. And I was like, this internet thing is so cool. <laughs> Hang them in so your locker, cool. Ben in your locker. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah. Love it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. right, one of my favorite icebreakers, and we can ask the audience too if they want to chime in because I feel like this is always an easy, fun one. Um, what is the best bird? Hey, Whitney's got hers. And hey, thank you, Whitney, for the happy anniversary. I appreciate that. Best so, bird. Yeah. The best bird? My, my favorite bird is a bluebird. Okay. Damon? Come on. Come on. I, like, <laughs> I, I mean, when you look at it, oh, like Kurt, of course. The eagle, but, yeah, that's what I was gonna say. The eagles are no, eagles eagle. are, Come on, the eagles are great. I think they're just they're yeah. I so I was I was away visiting family recently, Damon, and I came to this, like this. I, I was was they talking to you, Nicole? I was actually I was on this big walk run thing, and I went through like this craft fair. They had a huge thing, big painting of a an eagle and like people make fun of like my my bear barren wall and i'm like you know what? Yeah. i'm gonna get an eagle and put it up there but i didn't do it so anyway bald eagle demon you what's yours no i'm with you i'm with you 
If you if you ever get beside one, you just go, oh my goodness. Hey, we got chickadees. We've got uh, roadrunners. We've got uh, owls are fascinating. Owls so, are what's so yours? Cool. Um, I, you know, as I honestly, I've learned so much bird trivia from asking this question. But <laughs> it changes a lot. Like, did you know that? Um, well, I love I love bald eagles too. They're very majestic. It's a it's an easy answer. But a uh, woodpecker's tongue wraps around its brain when it's pecking to prevent it from like injury, which is just kind of cool. So wow. well, everybody, like, everybody out there Google that one. So hey, Diane yeah. says she's, 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 yeah. from, she's yeah. from Philadelphia. So she's going with the Egos. So all right. So these well, are well, Kurt, before I cut you off, or before yeah. I didn't mean to cut you off, but I want to just kind of put a I put a bow on this because I feel like when people hear this they're thinking, when would I ever ask a customer what is the best bird? Like, how would I ever weave that into conversation? Yeah. And some people, Kurt, this joke is for you, and it's a little PG-13, but some of us might be listening to this and um, and giving me this as their bird. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Never use this one. That I, was gonna what. I, <laughs> I told I'm Kurt I would bring the tiny hands. Um, so if... if, if, if <laughs> <laughs> if you guys, if you guys don't know that joke, you have to Google Kristen Wig on Saturday Night Live when she does the tiny hands, the hands in, in the history of Saturday Night Live. In my opinion, and I go back to like the Dan Aykroyd, you know, John Belushi days. It was one of the funniest bits. Sarah, do you have the do you have the tiny hands? I there? have all of them. So the first <laughs> time I got her. I had just done a really big webinar. So I was kind of like coming down from being on for, you know, an hour. And he said, you, so we just met and he goes, you had a really big event this morning, didn't you? I said, yeah. And he goes, how did it go? And I said, well, I'd say it rocked. <laughs> <laughs> didn't know each other. But I mean, this is part of like being your authentic self. Like, I think this stuff's funny. I don't do it all the time, but when it's yeah. appropriate. But um, but I will circle back to to free little hands. One of the things when you're listening to this, you're saying, How am I ever gonna bring up a spicy icebreaker? The best thing you can do to introduce something like this is to use what I would call a buffer. So, like Whitney, for example, if you want to go out and pitch this question to your family tonight at dinner. You can say, I was watching this LinkedIn live show this morning and the group was talking about what is the best bird, but it got me thinking, or I was driving to this meeting and I was listening to a podcast and da, 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 da. like use a buffer to introduce it, but it is really fun. Like if you have a dinner with clients and you're kind of running out of things to talk about, having some of these ready, just make it more fun and interesting and gives you something to talk about and differentiate you from your competitors. One of my favorite, we don't have to get into it now because it's a thinker, is who are the top three fictional per, fictional characters who make up your personality? Ooh, it's fictional it's characters thinker. that make up your personality. You could spend a whole work dinner chatting about this. Yeah, thing. yeah. That's a great question. That would That's, be crazy. Yeah. So let's let's get into that. I love this because like we um, yeah. Again, like on a video that I caught, and guys, if you're just catching us, boy, drop us a note. Uh, Whitney, uh, thank you. She dropped the, the Kristen Wig <laughs> video in the, in nice. the chat. So thank you, Whitney. Guys, oh, check it out over the weekend, Damon. You'll absolutely it is I, yeah, I, it is it up. is hysterical. I think it but I love what you're talking here about like you know, um building that rapport, building that relationship and getting away from you know that product feature challenge that mm -hmm. we just mm -hmm. you know and one of your workshops, you're talking about, you know, like we're at a trade show and we're, you know, our game face is on and we're just so compelled. And I know like, you know, Nicole, I could, you can only imagine, right. I just get, you know, you just get so in the zone. It's hard to take a step back, take a breath and be like, you know, ask about like, Hey, what's your favorite bird or what's your, who was your high school? Uh, you know, who was your uh, crush when you were a kid, you know, type thing. How talk when you're doing these workshops, what are some of the results or like, what are some of the other questions that you're working on? That's stuff. I think so Kurt's talking about I, I give this example one of in the authentic relationship building step we talk about this concept of just being cool right and being cool doesn't mean you have great fashion or you have a blue check mark by your Instagram being cool essentially is be someone who leaves people feeling energized versus mm -hmm. drained mm -hmm. so when I when we think about getting up on the pedestal people who drain other people are never getting up on this pedestal and that's not just in sales. It's how are you showing up for your colleagues? How are you showing wow. up for other people in your life, right? 
always either neutral or energized is what we want to leave people with. And in the example I give, I, I call it a tale of two trade shows because we've all been to a trade show either as the seller or someone walking the show. And I give an example, both true stories. I see my friend, I, I, I invited him, he said he was coming. So I see my friend Eric in a trade show booth and I was just waiting to chat with Eric. And Someone comes up, one of the reps, I, I don't know if I, they weren't an employee of the company, but I'm just standing in the aisle. He didn't look at my badge. He didn't see I was a vendor, didn't do any of the kind of due diligence you would expect, I think, because he was on autopilot. We all do it. Mm -hmm. But he just starts telling me all of the product features of this bathtub. <laughs> I mean, it was made of this concrete it holds blah 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 of gallons da, 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 you know all like all of this product feature and i'm just sitting here like looking at him thinking why are you wasting both of our times i don't have any i'm not gonna put this in a project i'm not gonna buy it for myself i don't have 11 grand to like i live in the <laughs> so it's just one of those things where he just left me so drained and he wasted yeah. time like your energy is precious yeah. let's go so that so is an example of just product vomit, right? And if he had just taken one second to give a mild icebreaker, Sarah, what do you do in Los Angeles? It says your name and your city right on the badge. You know, do a little badge, Bob, and say, hey, what do you do in LA? Then he would have heard, I'm I'm just a vendor waiting to say hi to my friend. And then he would have, yeah. done, you know, and so those, that little, little tiny steps of expressing genuine interest helps vet who you're talking to and then vet how to build it from there. I got to say, I really love this because, you know, there's such a strategy and intentionality about what you're, what you're saying here. Cause a lot of times, you know, for those of us who like, love talking to people, some of this stuff may come a little bit naturally, but we just don't really think about it. We don't think about how to use it right necessarily. And so I love how you're approaching this is cause it's very much a very strategic, very like walk into it, be prepared, be thoughtful, hear the things that you need to do. And so I, I just, I just love that approach. I think it would really help someone who's just, yeah. Thank great. you for saying that, Nicole. Cause I, and it, it applies to anything. If you're going to, into a networking event, uh -huh. what is your built-in icebreaker you're going to go yeah. in with, right? What do you want to get out of it? Have a goal of where you want to get out of the event. Ooh, yeah. go and talk to your coworkers. You already know. If you have some of these tools at the ready, it becomes a lot easier to do. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It's cool. Awesome. Yeah. I, yeah. I'm still stuck on product vomit. I'm sorry. I'm, I'm a 12 year old. I'm sitting here. I'm sitting here searching because I, I, I can't get that Monty Python from the meaning of life. You know, Kurt may know it cause we're older, but when there's a big guy that eats too much and he explodes. Yeah. I just think. <laughs> well, I was searching greatest, for it. Man. Somebody needs to put that in the chat box. One of the greatest scenes of all Gosh, time. Monty Python, meaning oh. of life. And, the, and, the, and the gentleman walks in. He says, "You better bring me a bucket." And uh, so, yeah, oh, that is a great. View. That is a great <laughs> visual, Dane. And so, man, we've got some juicy stuff going on. And Nicole, we have a big trade show coming up in two weeks, three weeks, whenever mm -hmm. it is. And so, you've got me thinking, Sarah. Exactly. Now, one thing that I I try to strive, try to work diligently on, is being like the connector. Mm -hmm. Can you talk a little bit about like in what I, in our conversation, I viewed you as the same. You and I got connected through mm -hmm. Tony. We've talked about masterminds. I feel like you're a vibrant connector. Can you talk a little bit about your connecting strategies that you do through sales? Kind of, you know, your book recommendations. What are some other uh, connecting? Uh, yeah, strategies? and I will. This is kind of like gold that I'm gonna share right now. It's been working real well, so I'd be happy to share it. But and it's coming from a place of genuine interest. But one of the things that I, I thank you for saying that, Kurt. I do like to connect people. Mm -hmm. But it's because I ask them questions and I know about their mm -hmm. business so I can remember, hey, you should talk to this person because I've asked mm -hmm. enough questions to have that knowledge to, to connect those dots. But one thing that's been really helpful when it comes to adding value when you don't necessarily know someone else is, hey, Damon, you know, I know we don't know each other, but I have been meeting so many people in my business and the different people that I've been meeting in my prospecting efforts. I'd love to connect to learn a little bit more about your company so I can keep you in mind during my prospecting efforts. Mm -hmm. And that is a really wow. easy way to get a quick meeting with someone. And it's yep. coming from a place of like, let me understand yep. what you do mm -hmm. so that if I meet someone who's a relevant fit, I'm going to connect you. And a big part of why this is important is when we talk about the emotional bank account and always be adding value, 
avocados are great. Book recommendations are great, but the whole, I'm going to use a Monty Python, the Holy grail of the Holy grail of the emotional bank account deposit is something that builds someone else's business. So, you know, I had Tony as a guest on my podcast after the interview, Tony goes, you've got to meet my friend, Kurt. Tony introduces us. Now Tony has deposits in my emotional bank account. If Tony needs something for me, I'll do anything for Tony. Uh, You know what I mean? Like that's how you start Mm -hmm. to build these relationships and they come from a place of the business part comes so much easier because all the relationship foundation is there. People yeah. want to work with people they like. That's never changed. But this is how we can do some like tactical tools to do it. Yeah. <sighs> so <Very> good. <laughs> Go ahead. I have a question, though, I was just going to ask mm-hmm. you, like, what are the signals that you should pay attention to when you're, you know, because this this prospecting sales is a journey. It's a process mm-hmm. and it takes time and progress. Right. What are some of the signals that you should be paying attention to or looking for in your prospect? to know they're ready to kind of get to the next level or get to the next stage. Does that make sense? Yeah, that's a great question. I think I'm going to give, I'm going to give a quick example that's following on our tale of two trade shows. I'm going to tell the other tale of the trade show because I think it (laughs) helps. You'll start to find natural pivot points when you're in conversations and it takes Uh practice, but it becomes a lot easier to start to ask for things if you've done these, the foundational steps. So um, there's a brewery in LA. It's called Golden Road, if anyone's heard of it. This was, I think, back in like 2016, 2017. But I'm at a show. Guy walks by. He's got his badge on. It's Tony Yano, ABC Pubs, Burbank, California. And I knew the Tony's Tavern. Like there's all these other companies that were, oh, the other restaurants that were owned by the owner of Golden Road. So he walks by and I said, hey, are you Golden Road, Tony? And he goes, well, now it's Anheuser-Busch, Tony, because I sold the brewery last year. And I was like, oh, my gosh, I didn't know. So like, we high fived. I was like, congratulations. That's amazing. And they had a lot of um, vegetarian menu items on, on the menu. And I said, well, I really hope they keep the hearts of palm ceviche because that's my favorite dish. He lights up. He said, oh, my gosh, that's my recipe. And so we're like <laughs> nerding out over. Being oh, God. It's like just all oh, none of it's none of it's schmarmy. You know, it's all. Yeah, yeah. Real human, yeah, authentic, you know. And so I asked him, "This would probably be a spicy icebreaker," but I said, "But my personality can get away with it." I said, "So what are you gonna do with all your Anheuser Busch money?" And he <laughs> said, well, I was like, "Well, I'm gonna open five new restaurants in Los Angeles. That's my pivot point." It's like, "Oh, have you ever considered fire?" I was selling fire features at the time. Have you ever considered fire features for your restaurant? And now we're in the booth right. and now we're talking business and we're talking about, you know, all of the, then the next step, right. the Acer sales is yeah. the storytelling on how my fire is going to help right. this business, et cetera, et cetera. But you'll start to see there's natural pivot points where it's yeah. really easy to ask because why wouldn't he do business with me? We have all of the same stuff in common. I like it, it just start, it takes practice, but it's so much easier to pay attention to the pivot points. If you have that foundational right. that relationship okay. built. Okay. Anyone out there that is going to a trade show, call Sarah. She needs to be in your booth. She <laughs> needs to be, in your, you need a little yeah. training session. Yes. And I'm going to say this, Sarah. So plug your ears again, please. Okay. Damon, how, we've done this what once or twice. How many, how many of these shows have we done? Right. right. Two, yeah, two, yeah. 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 Two or three. Two, 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 two. Right. Oh, we're, we're in the hundreds now, right? And I just told Nicole this morning, I'm like, Sarah is so good. I go, there's probably three people that I've met on the first virtual call and said, hey, will you come on the show? And I, I, I might be exaggerating at three. And so, Sarah, you just have a very, you, you are, you have a gift. You, you certainly have a magnetic personality. And so, you know, a lot of folks out there maybe don't have that, you know, that natural ability, but I love what you've described is like, you are, Nicole, you hit it on the head. It's like, it's very intention, intentional. Mm-hmm. It's authentic. It's genuine. And like, you're working on it. And again, guys, if you're out there, you're like, man, I'd love to get a little taste of this expertise, these superpowers, reach out to Sarah and she can walk you through these steps. I know, man, I, Sarah, we could keep you all day. I think we're, oh my God, we're at, like, we're coming into time. I didn't realize. Coming into time. We got to roll it up. We lost track of time. Let's, uh, Nicole, takeaways for you with this dynamo this wonderful conversation what 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 are you walking away with today other than like a hopefully a full full page of notes yeah no i um i do have a full page of notes i love the always be adding value 
Mm -hmm. um, and that's just a really great reminder for every relationship that I'm ever. Oh, sorry, Siri. Um, yeah, I don't know. <laughs> My so, name anyway, that all I time. love to always be adding value. So I'm definitely, I think that's a huge takeaway is, mm -hmm. you know, just leading with, and I think that's what you've been saying this whole time. Mm -hmm. What is it that they, that they need and how can you help serve them ultimately? Mm -hmm. So I love that. And I think, um, I loved what you said too, about communicating through stories and asking questions. Mm -hmm. I think that's huge. I think like being very intentional and strategic about when you have an event planned, a networking event or a big pitch or whatever, being very strategic and intentional about the questions that you want to ask, the icebreakers that you want to have on hand and at the ready and just really thinking and preparing for that in advance rather than just winging it. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so I think that's really um, those are some of the biggest takeaways um, that I have Um that I just loved. So thank you. This has been really, really helpful and informative. Yeah, uh, completely. Damon, your takeaways, your thoughts, what do you, what other, other than Monty Python, Holy Grail, Meaning of Life, Saturday Night Live, what, what, what do you got? <laughs> that, that, tiny just, hands. That, that makes me laugh. So, yeah, the tiny hands, I'm going to go see that. No, I just, you know, the way you you weave this all together, Sarah, is really nice. Mm -hmm. I mean, and, and using the acronyms and rolling people through, I can see how using the examples, the acronyms and your natural style, you can, you can teach people how to do this because it is a learned skill that you can, people can figure out and do. So thank you. It's fantastic, Sarah. I'm, I'm, I'm going to share, you know, pop, you know, I love the acronyms ACE, you know, ACE your sales. Uh, again, guys go to Sarah's uh, website, go to her LinkedIn profile, tons of great helpful information sarah i know you have a big event coming up i know it's down the road but boy time flies you have a nice event coming up in november do you want to share with everybody what's sure, going on in yeah i would be happy to so i do i do have a podcast so if you go to sarahmurray.com forward slash podcast or on any streaming services prospecting on purpose so we get into these examples in more detail so that's a great free resource and then on november 7th 8th and 9th once a quarter I run a virtual sales training. So it's one hour a day. So it's a pretty easy time commitment. And we go through action, communication, and execution each day. And so there's a workbook. It's really, really hands-on, very fun, a lot of value packed in a short amount of time. That um, if you'd like to be notified for that once we launch the landing pages, it's the URL is connect.sarahmurray.com. Dot com and I can throw it in the chat too but if you can sign up there and then we'll notify you as soon as we um, we open the doors for it but it's connect.sarahmurray.com November uh, 7th 8th and 9th and it's really fun a lot of great value that comes out of it and I'd love to have anyone who's interested well this is absolutely awesome. amazing we've got a couple of nice comments here again guys thank yeah. you for joining us today thank you for hanging out and just getting these just amazing incredible strategies and just value bombs from our dear friend, uh, Sarah, this is great. Now, Sarah, you know, one of my theme and I, you know, I, I was going to serenade Sarah, but you know, I wanted her to stay on the show. And so I decided not to do that, but you know, Fleetwood, since we're talking seventies, the whole show here, right. Fleetwood Mac has a great song, Sarah. So I was going to like, I was going to recite that song. So <laughs> guys, if you're looking for a good song over the weekend, check out the song, Sarah from Fleetwood Mac. Great but one. Sarah, Speaking of that, are you, are you a baseball fan by any chance? Sure. I mean, who's your who's your favorite who's your favorite team uh i guess i would say i guess i'm not really a baseball fan i guess the dodgers because i'm they're my local fan they're like they, do you have your have, are you, I like the logo are you, i've been to a game you like have you ever been to a game you've gone to a yeah, game yeah yeah right it's, it's fun great atmosphere right mm -hmm. question for you you're at the dodgers game okay you actually you're you're you're, you're, you're literally at the Dodgers game and it's bottom of the ninth. Okay. And there's a person on second, there's a guy in second base and it's tied score. You're playing your arch rival, San Diego Padres. It's a mm -hmm. ninth inning, bottom of the ninth guy on second base, two outs. And somebody has to hit, somebody needs a base hit to win the game. Okay. The manager turns down the bench and looks down and says, Hey, Murray, get up to the plate and hit in the winning run. Will you please? Okay. You with me? So now Sarah's strolling up to the plate to hit the winning run. Like you need to get juiced. Yep. What is your walk-up song? What song is on the loudspeaker for you to hit in that winning that winning run? Is it an internal song or a external? It's going one? on the. It's going uh, on. The I loudspeaker. would say "Final Countdown" by Europe. The final countdown. Oh, by Europe, yeah. Damon, man, she went old school. Old school, yeah. Dude, that was like the that, 80s. That's a great that was, one. That's like that's the only walk-up song that you could do. The final count. Oh, I love that. Damn. That's the only walk-up song you could do. 
that's the one. <laughs> so yeah. one answer. Hey. And she didn't even hesitate. Do you know that? Oh, like, yep, yeah, that's it. it. Yeah. I will say my internal song, and I this is a negotiation tip, and it has not been a podcast episode yet, but it's coming. Um, sometimes I listen to Baby Shark before big negotiations <laughs> just to like loosen my stuff up. That was, and it really Baby worked. Shark with the little try. hands, Damon. Baby Shark with the little Baby hands. Going up the what is the, okay, tell me what the strategy is there. Baby Shark. Well, How I've read it. There's a, there's a book about negotiation by Chris Voss. He's a hostage oh, negotiator. Yeah, yeah. And he yeah. talks about like the three voices. So you have the late night DJ FM, the friendly, playful voice, and then like a stern, assertive voice. And so I had my first, re I was asking for a lot of money. I was nervous. And um, I pulled out the book and I just went to my first dog-eared page and it talked about the playful voice and like, that's the one you should use. And so I was, I was driving to the meeting and in my head, I was like, you're a shark, you're a shark. And I was like, well, you're kind of a baby shark. And then I listened to the song and it just like made me all loose. And so I went into the negotiation. It was fun. So that's my new, there you go. That's my new little high, internal what? high pop song. That's there not a really awesome. good tip. I, I Try it. Yeah. Baby it's shark good. walking up to the plate, Damon. Yeah. <laughs> yep. There you go. Thank you so much for having me. I had all so right, much guys. this morning. We're going to yeah. run. So thank you all for being here today. Thank you, Sarah. We appreciate you. Hey, everybody out there, let's give a big, boring round of applause for Sarah. So Damon, take it away, my friend. All right. Well, thanks so much for being here today, Sarah. Thanks everyone that was commenting, listening. Go back again and listen to the replay from the beginning because Sarah dropped a lot of gold nuggets in here. Nicole, awesome questions. Thanks for being here, helping us out, making this a great show. Kurt Anderson, I believe we're back again Monday. I think so, dude. I think we're yeah. back here. Yeah. yeah, we'll be back. But everyone, like Kurt said, have a great weekend. Go out and do good, do good things, and we'll be back again. Hang out with us for a minute, Sarah, and we'll wrap up.